Now, I'll be the first to admit I am not the strongest when it comes to tactics in Football Manager, but I am very eager to improve. But sometimes that seems like a difficult task when there are so many different options in game. Well, today we're going to have a look at one aspect of your tactic, and that is the tempo that you're playing at. And we're going to try and analyse in game the difference between playing with a high tempo and a low tempo, and it's coming right up. So here's how we're going to conduct this tempo experiment. We've taken control of English Premier League club Crystal Palace and we're going to be in charge of their opening day away fixture against Everton. And we're going to rerun the same game twice for our first game against Everton. We are going to go into our in possession and we're going to pump the tempo up as high as it will go. What the game describes as having a higher tempo, which means that it's going to ask the team to go about their business, allegedly, in a more urgent fashion than the team mentality allows. And our team mentality is going to be left at balanced. So we're going to be looking to move the ball around quickly and decisively using the intensity of their approach to unsettle the opposition. We'll see how that goes. and eventually tire them out when we replay this game against Everton for a second time we're going to move the tempo down to a much lower option but we're going to get out there for this first game today and we're going to try and analyze just how significant playing on this higher tempo is when it comes to the patterns of play and the decision making of our players that we see out there on the field. One of the things I'm led to believe about tempo is that it will increase the player's urgency to try and get towards the opposition goal. And this might mean that they try to make attacking plays even though the percentage chances of it coming off might be quite low. Well, we're going to see exactly that, not once but twice in this next passage of play. Will Hughes has potentially four options around him in order to retain possession of the ball, but instead he's going to turn and try and play almost a blind pass in behind the Everton defence. Now you can see what a low percentage play that was. Even though the chances of it leading to a goal were quite low, he's tried to play the ball in for Mateta to run onto behind the defence. Now obviously this gives possession to Everton, but we will win it back through Elise and once more look at the urgency that we try and move the ball back towards the opposition goal. We're going to keep possession of the football to begin with, but then Joachim Anderson is the next player to watch. He has options to his right and his left. Instead, he's going to try and force the ball into midfield. Now, that pass into the centre of the pitch probably wasn't on, but he's made a decision to try and do something more risky in order to get his team up the pitch. As it is, in both those passages of play, we've lost possession of the ball. But that doesn't mean our players will look to do the risky thing in every scenario. Here, Crystal Palace have a goal kick. We're going to send it forward and Everton are going to win a defensive header that we are going to pick up the second ball with, with Will Hughes. Now, Hughes is going to play quite a progressive pass into Wilfred Zaha. But as the ball goes into Zaha, he's going to assess his options. At the moment, he's facing towards the opponent's goal. But he's going to decide that even though our tempo is set to high, any progressive pass is going to be too low percentage of chance for it to lead to an attacking play. So instead... He's going to check back and play the ball back to our defence. Now, our defence could launch it forward, but they're going to keep possession of the ball. They're going to weigh up their options until they move it into midfield to Will Hughes. Now, this time, the higher tempo is going to lead him to try and play the more progressive pass. He's going to look for the riskier option with the lower percentage chance of reward rather than maintain possession of the football in his urgency to try and craft a chance for us on goal. But yet again... As he plays his ball forward, it's too ambitious and Everton regain possession. One thing I'm eager to ascertain about playing with a higher tempo is how it might affect us when we are trying to dribble the football as well as just passing it. And in this highlight, we may have some evidence of how it might affect a player's decision making. Our midfielder Eze is going to close down Abdoulaye Decore in the Everton midfield and regain possession of the football. But as he springs forward, he's now got a decision to make. He has his striker just inside him, Mateta, who he could try and play a through ball to. But in his eagerness to try and make progress, towards the goal as quickly as possible. Instead, he's going to dribble the ball and have a low percentage effort on goal. 
What's quickly becoming apparent about this high tempo play is how much we are prioritizing progress up the pitch over possession. In this highlight, we're going to see a quick interchange of passes between Hughes and Elise. Now, in all honesty, as we pause the action, Elise doesn't really have many options. A high percentage play would seem to be to check back and play it to his right back, which would allow Crystal Palace to maintain possession of the football, even though they would be seeding, making progress up the pitch. Now, there is probably Probably a low percentage chance that Elise might be able to play a ball in behind the Everton defence for Mateta to run onto. And that's the decision that he makes, but unfortunately, his execution is poor. I think I'm starting to see really good evidence of how this higher tempo is affecting players' decision-making. In this highlight, Elise is going to do a great job of closing down Mikalenko and winning possession of the ball. But as he moves forward, he's got a decision to make. He has Mateta just inside him, who's completely unmarked. And the play that perhaps has the highest percentage chance of success is the simple 10-yard pass to his teammate. But once more, Elise is going to prioritise trying to make progress towards the goal, but as he dribbles back outside his man, he loses possession of the football once more. But that's not to say that trying to move towards the opposition goal with greater urgency doesn't sometimes have its rewards, as you'll see in this passage of play as we work the ball to Will Hughes in central midfield. Now, he has several options in order to keep possession of the football. He could play it to his right back, his defensive midfielder, potentially either of his centre-halves or even switch the ball over to his left back. But Hughes wants to make progress towards the opposition goal. But he is a player with good passing and vision who spots the forward run of Mateta. And this time, he does have the technique to pull off the play and Mateta is through on goal. And I really am beginning to see more and more highlights of Crystal Palace players taking risks more in hope than in expectation. Initially, when we win the ball back in this play, we're going to move it patiently around the midfield and the defence until it eventually comes into Decore in the midfield. He has an easy ball out to his left back. He could return it to his centre half. He could even turn and try and play it into his midfield partners. But the high tempo is going to lead Decore to try and force the issue in order to try and make a play that gets us closer to the opposition goal. This time, however, it is a rather aimless ball that tries to go behind the Everton defence and gets nowhere near to the player that could run onto it. Now, I can definitely see why some people would advise lowering the tempo if you find your players taking too many long shots. Remember, with this higher tempo, the thing that we're prioritising is making progress towards the opposition goal, even if that means we're going to make some decisions that have a low percentage chance of actually being successful. Here we have Decore charging forward. He could play a pass inside to a teammate. He could drive towards the line and try and get a ball into the box. Instead, he's going to continue and have an effort that is way off target. Here's another example of that urgency to make progress up the pitch, leading to an opportunity on goal. The ball's going to make its way through to Will Hughes again in midfield. Now, as he picks it up, he's got his back to goal. The options available to him that have the highest percentage chances of him executing are either the ball to his left back, returning the play to his centre-halves, or maybe even trying to find the wide man with the ball down the line. But Hughes has more intent than that. Instead, he swivels and plays a ball through to Mateta. It nearly leads to a shot. It could have led to a penalty, but it was Hughes forcing the issue and playing that riskier pass with the lower percentage chance of it actually coming off that this time led to a good opportunity for us. Here's a beautiful example where we're going to make the same play three times running. You can almost hear it ringing inside the heads of the Crystal Palace players. Make progress towards the Everton goal. Gay is going to slip the ball to Mitchell and he goes forward once. We win the ball back and Ward forces it forwards again. And then Elise comes inside and it's just get the ball towards the opposition goal rather than play the pass with the higher percentage chance of success. However, you can't say that this urgency to move the ball towards goal doesn't create some chances. This time we're going to win the ball back. We're going to make a progressive pass forward and it's going to lead to an opportunity as Eze brings the ball into the box and Edward fires over. So when might this high tempo approach be useful in game? Well, I can certainly see how it might work with a counter-attacking system where we might be winning the ball back closer to our own goal. And when we go forward, we want to go forward with urgency. We might want to seize the opportunity as it might be the last we have for a while 
and we want to try and make progressive passes, maybe even play some lower percentage chance of success passes in order to try and force an opportunity at goal. I can also see it working well late in games where we are trailing and in an effort to try and equalize or maybe even find a winner, we could up that tempo and try and force the game a little bit, maybe making some decisions that have a lower chance of success but might just lead to a chance that otherwise wouldn't have materialized if we were prioritizing possession rather than progression. So now that we've played that game against Everton through once on a higher tempo mentality, we're going to go into our in-possession instructions and this time we're going to move this slider all the way down in the opposite direction. So allegedly, we're going to be asking our team to go about their business in a much more considered and patient manner than the team mentality, which is still set to balanced, would normally demand. So we're going to be asking players to take their time with the ball, retain possession with no great short-term purpose, with the intention to try and preserve control of the game. What will that look like in this match? What kind of decisions will we see our players make? Let's head back out onto the pitch and have a look how it differs from our first approach. So what are we looking to see with this lower tempo? Well, perhaps we're looking to see our players be a bit more thoughtful when they're on the ball and only trying to make progress up the field when they deem the percentage chances of the ball they want to play being successful to be a little higher. And I think we have evidence of that in this play here. Rather than force the ball up the field, our midfield and our defence are going to be a little bit more conservative playing it around between themselves, waiting for a better, higher percentage opportunity to play the ball forward when Hughes decides that he thinks he can try and clip one over the top. I've paused the game with Everton in possession of the football and attacking our goal, but we're about to win it back and see evidence, I think, of our lower mentality affecting players' decision-making. The first player to watch is Ducore, who has the chance to clear the ball as soon as he's won it. But instead... He plays a shorter, higher percentage pass to Zaha up the line. Now Zaha himself could look to do something more risky, but instead he's going to choose to keep possession with Mitchell, who again on a higher mentality might have chosen to clear the ball up the line, but instead he turns, weighs up his options, gives it back to our goalie. Further evidence of the same principle in this move. Again, we're going to win back possession of the ball, and rather than go at goal more directly and with more urgency, we're just going to take our time we're going to play higher percentage passes, which means we're going to keep possession of the ball rather than try and force a route to goal with quicker or more urgent tempo. And it's going to lead to another opportunity for us as Zaha breaks down the wing and eventually wins us a throw in in an attacking area. Now, we might have evidence here of our lower tempo affecting a different aspect of our play. In this move, Everton's Decore is going to clear the ball and Crystal Palace's Decore is going to pick it up on the edge of the Everton box. Now, on a higher tempo, he might try and get a quick shot away or try and play a more risky ball into the box for a teammate. Instead, on a lower tempo, he turns his back to goal, shields the ball, is more thoughtful about the pass he will play, then gives a ball to Zaha and it almost leads to an effort on goal. In this next highlight, Palace have a free kick following an offside, and it's going to lead to our highest number of passes in succession yet. Now, with a higher tempo, Gay might force the ball forward from the free kick, but instead he just plays it short into midfield, and we slowly and patiently probe the opposition, choosing the least risky option, considering which ball we're going to play with a little more caution, and we gently move the ball around until we force it out onto the wing. Now, earlier when we were playing on a higher tempo, Will Hughes is the player that was repeatedly trying to force the issue and clip balls over the top, whereas in this move, he's quite happy to play the ball to his defence. And as we gently move the ball along our back line, just waiting for that opening where we might be able to force the play and it pay off, we win a free kick on the halfway line. However, a lower tempo doesn't mean your players will never attempt a risky pass to try and create a chance on goal. Our man in this highlight is Will Hughes, who is prone to a clipped ball over the top. And in this highlight, he's actually going to play quite a risky one. He's got a low percentage chance of being effective, but Zaha manages to run onto it, checks back, plays a ball to Mitchell, who shoots, and we've had another opportunity on goal. Into the second half now, and we're going to continue to move the ball around patiently. But will we also see another aspect 
of the lower tempo. As we pause the game with Elise in possession of the football, does the lower tempo give him more time to consider what his decision might be and potentially change his mind? He picks up the ball with his back to goal and considers running at the opposition but then decides to check back, maybe deciding that it was too risky a play and instead play it back to his defence so that we can retain possession. But just a little reminder that even on a lower tempo, when the players spot a good opportunity to play with more urgency, they will take it this time. The ball rolls into midfield to Will Hughes. In previous highlights, we've seen how he will retain possession and move the ball back to his own defenders. But not this time, as he's going to make a quick turn and play a ball through for Eze to run onto. And it leads to another good effort on goal for Crystal Palace. But for our final highlight, we'll show you an example where our lower tempo might actually harm us rather than help us. It's the 93rd minute of the game. We're trailing Everton 1-0. And this might be our last opportunity to find an equaliser as Eze breaks forward and feeds the ball to Jordan Ayew. Now, so late in the game, you would like him to potentially shoot, drive towards goal, or try and play through one of the onrushing midfielders. But with the lower tempo instead, he decides to turn back and return a ball to one of his midfielders, and the opportunity is lost. So what conclusions can we draw, having played the game on a lower and a higher tempo? Well, firstly, playing on the two extremes of tempo didn't have as big an impact on our play as I thought it might. Although the possession that we had was greater with the lower tempo, it was still way below 50%. And even on the lower tempo, there were times when we would play risky passes and try and make our way towards goal with urgency. And it wasn't as though playing on the higher tempo didn't give us spells in the game where we tried to retain possession of the ball. So I think what I've learned is that tempo is really just one part of trying to create an approach to your game in Football Manager. Maybe a higher tempo might work well with more direct passing when we're potentially playing with a little more caution and we're trying to counter-attack teams to try and be a danger on the break. Whereas a lower tempo might work well when we're trying to be the more dominant side, when we might want to distribute the ball short, as well as trying to select some options that might allow us to retain possession of the ball and try and assert our dominance by being a little bit more positive in our approach. Hopefully that video has given you a bit more of an insight into the difference it makes to your tactic when you have a lower or a higher tempo set. If you're looking for more tactical guides on Football Manager, this is probably the video you want to head to next.